Hey, Taylor Tots. When people are spewing hate, just know love will always shine through. Let's go. <laughs> hey, Taylor Tots. Welcome back to Justice is Served. So I am um, going to talk about a few things um, in a, um, I guess, experience, girl. <laughs> So first and foremost, uh, biggest pressing issue here, it is so hot in our house. Okay, so our AC went, um, not completely went out, but it is, put it this way, she's not working, girl. And so she hasn't been working since uh, Wednesday. And so Tuesday, <clears throat> rewind, it hasn't been working for a couple of weeks. Um, it was just slowly and slowly, slowly getting warmer and warmer and warmer. And our power bill went from $200 to $400. It was nuts. And we were like, what in the world is going on? Why is it getting warmer in here? Especially in our master bedroom. And our master bedroom um, <clears throat> is right over the garage. So I figured most of the, the issue is because we needed to insulate the garage door because the sun is on that side of our house like most of the day. So, of course, um, my partner Chris is like, you know what, we'll get some coolant and we'll figure it out. He can do it himself. Well, when he was doing it, there was something wrong. It just wasn't working. So I guess the intake was like messed up or something. I don't know. He was explaining it. I don't get it, girl. I was just to be the pretty one. Um... <laughs> So I, um, I ended up calling, uh, last Tuesday for somebody to come out and look at it. And then Chris was like, wait, don't we have, um, home insurance or a home warranty? And I said, yeah, we do have a warranty. Um, because I learned from the whole moving situation to just go ahead and get everything, get the highest amount of coverage you can get, because it's going to be a moment in time where you're going to need it. And then, um, if you didn't do it, you like me and get screwed out of the, the whole situation time, another story, another time. <clears throat> But, um, so I ended up canceling it cause they were going to be here on Thursday. So Wednesday morning I called and, uh, did everything through the home warranty and they're like, yeah, it'll take about, um, 24 to 48 hours. And then they'll contact you uh, to let you know when they're going to come out. I said, okay. Um, so because the place that we had called originally, they were going to come out within like 24 hours, but then they got something happened and it was going to be 48 hours. So I'm sitting there thinking it's the same process. They'll come out on Saturday. <clears throat> no, 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 no. So it has been 85 degrees in our house. And of course I was in Huntsville over the weekend. So I'm in a hotel or was in a hotel um, with air conditioning. And Chris is here having to um, endure this terrible heat. So <clears throat> of course I came home late on Sunday night. We went to uh, Home Depot and bought a $400 unit that goes, uh, that you can connect to the window. It's not a window unit itself, but it's something that a hose hooks up to it. And then it's a room, uh, it cools the room. Well, <clears throat> those sinuses are killing me, girl. So, uh, we got that one we've had it like, like literally trying to place the fans like right in front of it, trying to get as much cooling as possible. But just know I'm in my drag room and there's no air in here. So I'm sweating the house on already. I'm like, Oh honey, I'm dying. So, <clears throat> today, Monday, um, obviously you're watching this on Tuesday, but Monday, um, when I'm filming this, they still had not called. So, I called uh, the home warranty and was like, is there a reason why I still haven't heard anything? So, they ended up giving me, um, uh, they said, you've waited long enough, you know, trying to make it seem like they're doing this, all this above and beyond. You've waited long enough, and uh, here's the contact information for you to call. And I'm like, for me to call and set up the person, I thought they were calling to set up the person. I thought that was the whole point. That's what I was waiting on. So I hang up the phone. I call. She gives me the claim number, the, the people to call, whatever. I call and that person said, we told them last week when they tried submitting this that we don't work with war um, home warranties anymore. So I don't know what to do for you. And I'm like, so I hang up the phone. Just so you know, when I call 210 home warranty, which is who we're through, you call in and the call, uh, the call list or whatever, the call, call volume is so high that it's going to take, uh, they give you an option for a callback. It took 30 minutes. Okay. 30 minutes from the call me back the first time. Call them the second time. Same thing. Finally calls me back. I tell them the information's incorrect. Um, that they no longer do home warranties. And, um, <clears throat> so of course at this point I'm irritated, uh, because it's 85 degrees in the house. And I, uh, I'm like, I don't understand. And, and so what do I do naturally? I just, I open my mouth and say what I, I'm, I'm thinking, to be honest with you. And I said, I'm a little confused because 
y'all told me it'd be 24 to 48 hours. It's now been five days and I had to call you to get the information and now they're not even accepting this. So I'm confused of what it was because I thought y'all were putting the appointment together, not me. Confused, okay? But then I was like, you dial it back a little bit, girl. Let them see, what they, see if they can get it done. I said, I need it today. Like, I need for you to give me this information today because I need to book this ASAP. It is already almost noon. I need this done. And so, note, they're closed on the weekends. How convenient. I'm so glad that you're off on the weekend. So and nobody's problems matter on the weekend. Um, you know, because Saturday and Sunday, and then, of course, if it's after 5 o'clock, there's no one available for them either because y'all are doing such a great job making sure that everybody is taking care of it, uh, that, you know, spends their money for their home warranty with policies through your company. And she gives me another information. I call this place. They set it up. They can't come out till Wednesday. Okay. It's, it, you're watching this video now on Tuesday, but it was Monday when I'm filming this. So I'm like, that's two days from now. And it's 85 degrees in this house. And we're, we're dying over here. I mean, it's, we're dying. It is so hot in this house. And I don't know about you, but I cannot sleep when it's hot and we're struggling. And of course this little tiny unit, um, is just, I mean, it's trying girl. It's trying, but it's not working, but that's $400 that I wasn't planning on spending. I'm not made of money, girl. I'm not rich. And so I'm like, so I said, you know what? She goes, well, I'm sorry. I don't know what else to, to, to tell you. Wednesday's the earliest we can be there from 12 to four or between 12 and four. And I said, okay. I said, fine, go ahead and put me down for that. I'm about to call this home warranty. I'm about to tell him exactly what I think. So I call and I said, can I speak to your supervisor? And the, this guy, of course, is a this different person every single time I've called. And again, yet another 30 minutes of waiting for it to call me back for them to be available. So I said, yes, I need to have, a, I said, I want to speak to the supervisor, please. And he goes, was there something I can help you with? I said, well, probably not. But I said, if you want to, if you want to try first, um, I said, I, I want to call and complain. Or I said, I have a complaint because I'm having an issue with this whole ordeal of, you know, working with you, um, working with your company is what I said. I said, I'm very confused at why I waited five days. And then I had to call you guys on like today, Monday and ask for my information, which it wasn't getting done after they told me to take 24 to 48 hours. Here it is five days later and I'm having to call you and ask for it. And I said, then the, the information's incorrect. And then the company said they told y'all last week, which I didn't get the information last week. Remember y'all, y'all waited until I called today. Um, so last week they told your company that they're not doing it anymore, but y'all still proceeded to go ahead and put a claim through to them. And you told me the information, which was not correct. I called and then I didn't have to call back in. I said, so just so you know, like y'all's call waiting, uh, y'all's call list is ridiculous. Like your waiting list is, is your call waiting is so long. Like I'm having to wait 30 minutes at a time to get a hold of anybody. And, and I was like, Simon, it's just ridiculous. And at this point he's like, uh-huh. So I'm, I'm logging this. He goes, so you're calling in to complain. Girl. As soon as he made that little smart ass comment. So you're calling in to complain. Was there anything else I can help with? Or were you just calling in to complain? Because I can, I'm going to document it for you. I said, actually, I'm calling in to complain because do you not understand? I said, every time is 30 minutes to call in here. This is my third time calling your company because y'all can't do your job. Because at this point, I'm like, you want to get sassy with me, miss ma'am. And you got the right one today, Hanny. Right one. Um, and I'm like, I know your feminine voice thinks that you're going to challenge my feminine voice, but let's do it, ma'am. So I was like, so yeah, my issue is, is I've had to now spend 30 minutes every single time waiting for you to call me back. Okay. Of my day, my day, not yours of my day waiting to be able to speak to somebody after they told you guys last week. And it's been five days since I, uh, called in for my home warranty. And I said that the, the thing that I need for you to understand, I didn't wait to pay that bill when we closed on that house and we got that, that home warranty, honey, I called, set up the thing and paid it immediately. Oh, yeah, I paid it immediately. There was no waiting, girl. There was no waiting. Not at all. So I said, why am if, if you didn't have to wait on the payment for my plan, why am I having to wait on you and then have to contact you to give me the information on something that I planned already with you and you guys can't seem to do your job? I said, and then when you when I do call you to do your job, you give me information that's incorrect, then I then have to hang up and call again 
And I was like, so I'm just a little confused of why this whole process is such a hot ass mess. I said, and it's 85 degrees in our house. And I'm not exaggerating. Our thermostat is working, girl. I said, 85 degrees inside the house. I said, it's a, over 100 degrees outside the house. So can you please tell me why I'm having to babysit your company to give me my information? I bet if I called and asked for a, a plan and they never paid uh, the fee, you'd be, you'd be knocking on that door. Girl, where's, where's the money? And so then he said, he's like, I hear him typing. And then he says, is there any other complaints? I said, yeah, I ended up having to spend $400 on a unit because y'all couldn't do your job. And I now had to go and spend money and we're now confined to our master bedroom, which our unit still is not keeping it cool in this room. But yet we're trying to do something because you guys are taking so long to do your job. So can your company pay me back for that? He says, unfortunately, that's not something we can do. And I said, you're right. That's why I didn't ask for you to do it. I said, your company, and I know this is above you. Yeah. Do you know this motherfucker said, well, unfortunately, that's not something we offer as a company. Um, but is there any other complaints that I can put down? So I'm going to wait till my air conditioner's fixed because here's the thing. He said, there's a survey at the end and it hangs up on me. I'm going to call back once my air conditioner's fixed on Wednesday and I'm going to talk to a supervisor. I'm going to say, I don't want to speak to you. I want to speak to your supervisor. And I want for your sup I want supervisor to find out who little Miss Ma'am was that I talked to last with a snarky ass little attitude. And I want for them to understand that when people are calling in frustrated, you having an attitude working there is not helping anything. And I was chill the first three fucking times I called in last week. I was chill. I was chill. But what you're not going to do is make my partner and I sit up in this damn heat for five days. Well, me was only like three. And then Chris was for the whole time to get to now. But now we're spending extra money. And I'm going to tell the supervisor that I didn't expect to spend an extra $500 or $400 on a air conditioning unit that goes in the middle that we're probably never going to use again because I need for you to fix my damn air and because you took so long to what? Give me a number to call for me to make the appointment and a claim number? That's it? That's all you needed to do? I'm confused of where this disconnect is. And I even told that the, the, the representative guy there, I said, I'm confused of where this disconnect is. Because all y'all did was get me a name and a number to call and a claim number for me to call and set up my own appointment, which I'm confused about anyway because I thought that was your job. Like, I thought that was y'all's job. I thought y'all had, play, like, people in there that does that. So confused. And he's like, well, I'm so sorry that for the inconvenience. I said, no, the biggest inconvenience is that you're sitting here, t like, telling me you're sorry, but it's still 85 degrees in my house, and I still now have to call and set up everything. Or, so, no, I said, I still had to call and set up everything, which was wrong the first time, then had to do it again, and now I'm calling to tell you because I'm wanting to see what your company can do for me for this huge inconvenience. But again, I digress. But on a positive note, girl, they coming out on Wednesday, okay? <laughs> and so Chris said, we'll just suck it up for two more days. We'll deal with it. Um, you know what? We've, we've, I ain't gonna say we've been through a lot of bad shit, girl. Because, I mean, we haven't. I mean, one time the power went out and we had candles everywhere. But for some reason, we only remembered that we had a ring light. And that's what we were using for light. So, <laughs> um. But I will tell you, you know what, I mean, I'm frustrated about it, but it's not going to do anything right now. There's nothing else I can do until it's done. I'm going to wait until the service is finished, done, ain't going to worry about it. And then I'm going to call and I'm going to talk to a supervisor and I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk to a single person until I get a supervisor to actually speak to. You can call them Karen all day long, but when I tell you, when you pay something and you expect for a company to hold up their end, that is their job. That's their entire being. That's what they do is the home warranty situation. I'm just so confused of why there's so much disconnect and why I had to wait so long for you to give me a name and a number and a claim number for me to call and set up my own appointment. Like, I don't get it. Like, it's a little weird to me. But now because of your, your team dropping the ball numerous times in a five-day time frame and not making it a priority, but I know it was a priority that on Friday they clocked out right at five o'clock for them to go home, I'm sure. Uh, so Saturday and Sunday, nobody matters in your company at this point. Um, like we're not a priority, you know, the people that pay for these policies for you to have a job, things like that. Yeah. Um, so just saying, put in the comments if you think I'm acting a little extra about it. Tell me if you think I'm overreacting, but, um, if you think I am, I want you to come and hang out with me in my house and I want you to feel this 85 degrees. 
uh, with the air completely off because I'm not gonna have something running that is not producing anything but hot air and still charge me $400 because it won't turn off. So, um, just saying. <laughs> but uh, on a great note, okay, let's talk. Let's talk. Okay, so it's a high and a low note because this weekend was so amazing. I went to Huntsville, Alabama and performed at um, uh, Explore the Camp, is if you're looking it up on social media, but it's called The Camp. Um, and Majesty Divine was so awesome and actually booked me to come there and perform. I was their special guest. Um, it was an 11 hour drive there, 11 hours back, more like 12 with stopping to get gas a couple times. Of course, I have peed a million times on this road trip. I don't know what it was about it. I'm usually not even that type of person, but girl, I had to pee like a million times. But, um, the, the experience itself was absolutely phenomenal. The hotel that AC Marriott, um, uh, was so good in Huntsville, Alabama. They were so sweet. Everybody was amazing. Um, I just was like, I don't even know. It was great. But I mean, I will tell you, it was such a fantastic experience. I didn't have to stress about anything. Um, the, uh, actual show itself was fantastic. The, the camp, uh, venue was so awesome. The cool is, uh, cool thing is I got in on Friday, um, around like six o'clock. So I had to run a target, do a couple things, um, which I know you saw in the video, uh, previously, but I ended up meeting them at camp to, or at the camp to, um, to look at the space, look at the venue, meet the people, and, um, just really just get my feel and bearings before we go in. Um, so Majesty was awesome about wanting to make sure that I got an opportunity to see it because obviously I'm performing there the next day. And when I say the camp, it is not actually a camp. It is actually, um, on the corner of this huge shopping center. Um, super cool. When you're inside of it, you don't even know that you're even near a highway. It's so crazy. Uh, but everybody was so upbeat, so positive, so nice, so helpful. Um, of course, it's Southern hospitality, but um, I know that if you're an entertainer, you know you've performed at a couple places that, like, they look at the entertainers almost as, like, a meh moment. Um, but these people really appreciated every single person that comes there to play and to, to perform and to do anything with them. Um, and it was so refreshing to feel that, too, because they're so sweet. And... They had a band playing, so it was really good. I mean, these people that were in the band, I don't know who they were, but they were phenomenal. Um, I mean, you would have thought you were listening to a CD, like, I mean, or a CD, MP3, you see how old I am? Um, <laughs> but it was so good. Um, the drinks were great. Um, I will tell you, it was over 100 degrees, and you got to think, you're, I put duct tape on my head to pin my wigs to. You're putting a wig, which is almost like a ball cap, but with danglings on the ball cap. I put hip pads on that are foam, and the foam is like this thick on each side, plus the butt pads, plus two pair of tights, plus your outfit, plus your bodysuit, your cincher, um, the bra, the inserts for the chest, everything. And then you're also wearing high heels, and then of course costuming, you're wearing, I wear giant jewelry, I wear gloves, I mean you're putting all this stuff on. And it's over 100 degrees, girl, and all I had eaten that morning is a kind bar, because, um... I was like, you know what? I'm not super hungry. Did my makeup. And once I have my makeup on, I'm not a fan of like eating while I'm in makeup. Um, so I was like, you know, I'll just be like, whatever. I had two drinks. And if you look in my video, um, the drink was like this big girl. Um, they hook a girl up. But I was like, by the, the my last number in the butterfly gown, um, I was dying. I was, I literally felt like I was going to throw up. I was like so hot. But... I will tell you the adrenaline kept me going because the entertainers are so different. They all bring a different type of entertainment. They're all um, so much fun in the back to hang out with. They're so personable. And of course, you know, the crowd was fantastic. And speaking of the entertainers, uh, just as like who I know and met and things like that. So Majesty Divine, um, I put their picture up on my video from yesterday. So if you get an opportunity to go back and see there. Um, actually, you know what? I'm just going to put it up on here. So, Majesty Divine, um, she is fantastic. She was the show director, so, or she is the show director. She has been making such a huge impact in Huntsville, Alabama. She has been going to many different venues and hosting, um, uh, whether it be a karaoke or uh, trivia or even just a show or anything like that. But I will tell you, her drive and determination and professionalism is what is making um, her so successful in Huntsville because she wants to bring 
um, a very eclectic group of people to perform, but she also is bringing people that don't live in Huntsville to perform every once in a while, just to shake it up. And I was so appreciative that she um, selected me to come and actually be, and I told her on Facebook, I said, I appreciate you letting me be a puzzle piece in your amazing journey because you're making such a huge impact in Huntsville, Alabama. And, and I'm going to pepper in some of the negative, okay? And it's not about her or the entertainment or camp. So, with that being said, of her making such a huge impact in Huntsville, Alabama, I have to be, I mean, it was almost like a reality check, and it slapped me in the face so hard today, because it was I was oblivious to it on Saturday when I was there, but there are some individuals that are out protesting um, the any drag show, uh, any drag brunch, uh, any uh, drag reading time. Um, our story time with drag queens, anything like that that has to do with their family functions. So meaning that people can bring their kids. Um, these people were so disgusting. And I saw it today on Facebook. Somebody sent me um, who it was that was saying something. And it was a picture of my, like all of us together, our group selfie. And then they zoomed in on um, a little girl. And I'm not going to be specific of who, um, but I'm just saying that they zoomed in on her and it was pretty much saying, um, you know, we stopped Huntsville, we stopped babies being killed, but now kids are being, um, uh, what is it called, um, molested by perverts and pedophiles on... Uh, at these drag shows and drag brunches. And I was like, what? So I went and actually looked up these people. And it's this couple. And I'm not going to say their name. Because I'm not going to go into uh, them. I don't want them coming to my channel. If they come to my channel and they say anything, honey, I will have a lawsuit on them so quick. It's not even funny. From what I understand, there's a couple entertainers that are already filing lawsuits and police reports against them. Because it got to the point where these people are threatening uh, to, to attack them. And it's, I did not realize, because I've been out of that atmosphere for so long, even though being in the Gulf Coast where it was Louisiana and stuff, I had some people, but you got to think there's so many tourists that are coming in. You don't really see many of the people that live there um, that act that way, because I know they're there, but I mean, I didn't, I didn't encounter them as often. And, but going there, I didn't experience them either because we were inside, we were performing, but the whole time we were performing, they were standing outside with a megaphone screaming um, that we're pedos, that we are going to hell, we are um, disgusting, that we are groomers, um, that all drag queens are groomers, and that parents should be um, put to death by the state, and that drag queens should be put to death by the state because we are men dressed up as women stripping for kids and dancing sexually on kids. And I was so disgusted at what these people were saying. I'm like, are you kidding me? However, okay, the however part is, is saying something to them or sharing their information does nothing for us in the community. All it does is give them even more of a voice. So I didn't comment. I didn't share it. I'm talking about this right now, but I'm not saying their name. I'm not showing you the clip. I'm not showing anything. Because there's other people and families that are involved in this and I don't want to stir up anything or make it to where these people are feeling singled out or anything like that. Because again, they're going to handle their business. These people need, are eventually going to have, they're eventually going to be dealt with. I'll just tell you that. Because if they, they are literally sending messages to entertainers telling them that they should be put to death by the state because they're gay. And... They should be put to death because they are drag queens. And they're sitting here literally stereotyping drag queens and entertainers or anybody in the LGBTQIA community as, as pedos and groomers and murderers of infants. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And this is some hillbilly shit. Let me just tell you right now, when I tell you when I was looking at this bitch's page, both of them, all I heard was banjos, girl, and I was trying to paddle faster to get the hell out of here. And this is where I commend the entertainer so much, and I commend Majesty Divine so much, because 
I remember being in Alabama and performing and being followed home and people following me to the club and like literally parking behind my car and I wouldn't get out because I knew it was going to be bad if I got out of my car. The only thing that saved me is that like people came out or security came out and they drove off. Not nobody's knowing what's going on. And I'm over here scared out of my wits because I know that something's about to happen. I mean, it's so real. It is still so real. And I can't believe it that these people are so ignorant that you're, you're running around saying these things and you're sitting here saying that people are going to burn in hell because of, of what they're doing in life. But I'm like, you are literally sitting here judging people nonstop. Shit. But these two people that always have so much to say and make it a point to every single time come out and make a comment and, and literally yell at the, and they were yelling at a let, like they literally was like, you're going to hell lesbian. Like at one point, cause I watched a lot, they were live. I watched one of the lives and, um, well today, cause obviously it records it on Facebook and they posted it and he's yelling at the customers going in there and they're sitting there saying, oh, there's people that's under the age of 10 in there and, and y'all can condone, like strippers can't. Uh, dance on five-year-olds. Why can uh, men dress as women do that? Are men more qualified to do it than women? I mean, it was disgusting. And this is where, when people say, support your community, this is why. There are entertainers that are in Huntsville, Alabama right now because of some stuff that went off today that feel so unsafe to even, like, leave their home right now. Because these people are literally threatening to announce pretty much their addresses, their legal names of where they live. And these are the entertainers that they're trying to leak all their information of where they live for people in the community to go and attack these people, to attack entertainers. This is so disgusting. And I'm like, it is 2022, Mary. Like, I don't get it. I don't understand. And the ignorance is ridiculous. There is a difference in having an opinion and saying what you think and you believe versus actually physically harming people and trying to take rights away from people when you have no right for that. It is not your right to tell other people what to do with their life. I don't get it. And I'm just so disgusted. And Majesty Divine has literally made such a platform in places that maybe there wouldn't normally be a drag presence or a LGBTQIA plus presence. And they're not backing down. And this is what I want to tell every single one of you, whether you love this conversation or you hate this conversation, we all help who needs to be helped. Right now, we need to get, first off, women need to have an opportunity to do whatever they want with their body. It's their body. Okay. Again, I don't want to know all the, the if, ands, or buts about it. You don't see a single person telling a man what they should be doing with their body. Period. No one. No one. No straight man has ever been told you don't need to do X, Y, and Z with your body. But women are constantly being put on this pedestal of an object. Like the government and people in this world have an opportunity to tell them what they should be doing with themselves. I don't understand the double standard. I don't get it. And it's absolutely disgusting to me that this would even be happening. But right now, the diversity and inclusion is so many different facets and it's all about being accepting and building a platform for everybody to feel included and to, to be equal. And when I say diversity and inclusion, this is why every single time I say LGBTQIA+, I always say that is not just a community in the sense of just the gay world or the queer world whatever it may be that everybody thinks it's to when they see pride, it is actually for every single individual that has ever been uh, not accepted or somebody that has ever been told to do something other than what they wanted to do as their own uh, decision. And it is for every single person that has never belonged in a workplace. It's for, it's for people that has never, has not been given 100% equal opportunity in every single situation. And that is why that people... And it's so ignorant to me when they complain about why there's so many colors being added to the pride flag. And I said, pride is not this small. 
Pride is the whole world. And the whole world needs to understand that we are all here as individuals and we're all important. And it's not going to change. You, it, the, the quicker we get to it, the more peaceful this life is going to be. And it's never going to be perfect. But I don't understand why you're so worried about what other people are doing with their body. You need to focus on yourself, paying your own bills and living your own best life. And don't worry about what other people are doing. I don't get it. And I, and I will never understand it. I don't want to hear it. But these two bigots, I'm really hoping that these lawsuits go out to them. And I hope they are arrested. And I hope that when they're in jail, that these people give them a taste of their own medicine. Of what it feels like for you to pick and bully on people that has done nothing to you. Nothing to you. I will tell you one thing for me um, that was so inspiring is a young girl came up and you can see it in the comments yourself on my TikTok, but a young lady came up. She was extremely young. Uh, she had to be like five or six, um, maybe even seven. She came up and tipped me a dollar and she actually showed me her phone to show me that she subscribed to my channel for YouTube. And I was so excited because... Come to find out, she wants to be a makeup artist. She wants to do tutorials, and she already does things like that at a small level, like on, um, I think it's, I think her mom said her grandmother's page, and it's just so, so amazing for people to teach their kids now that you don't just have to be a doctor, a lawyer, or a nurse growing up. You can be a makeup artist. You can be a social media star. You can be whatever you want to be, and there's so many different facets in this world, but it's all about the support that you have in life and the drive that you're going to have to do it. And it's so good for people to be showing their kids and letting them have the freedom of expression to, to discover themselves sooner. Because imagine where most of us would be if we would have discovered ourselves sooner, sooner without being held back from these ignorant thought processes that has nothing to do with us. I was like, why am I having to break down what I've been taught about myself, taught about myself to find myself? Because I've, I've been told so many different things growing up, what's, what's good, what's bad, what's accepted, what's not, how to tear that away because it wasn't true. And then now I, I finally am still learning myself. We never stop learning ourselves. But it's so great that these parents are so realistic in life. And I said this to an entertainer and I told them, you know, please do not get bogged down on these people being so ignorant. Don't, don't feed the flame by entertaining them with anything because... All it does is it makes them want to make you a target even more. And I'm not saying be quiet by any means, but just make sure when you speak, it's impactful and um, that it has some weight to it. Uh, because you don't want to just keep talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. You want to make sure that when you do talk and when you do speak, it's got a lot of action behind it um, and it makes a, it makes a difference. And I told him, I said, here's the one thing to say it. And, and this is going to sound really bad, but these generations that are thinking so ignorantly it's getting watered down the longer we go in this in this lifetime, okay? And the longer we go, and they start dwindling off, if you catch my drift, um, the more they dwindle off, the less of their teachings are going to be there down the line. And yes, you need to, we need to fight now, we need to make it an impact now, but we also have to make sure we're doing things with time, because time... We don't want to now fix. We want to now and a longevity fix. And we are educating as much as we possibly can. And these people are getting smart as far as their businesses and making sure that these individuals are not allowed in their in their establishment. Um, if they set foot on there, they'll call the law on them. They'll let them deal with it, X, Y, and Z. And these people are very persistent. I get it. But we're also persistent in being the 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 positivity in the world, the love and the light in the world, and killing them with kindness. And when they decide to overstep, they'll get checked. Trust and believe. Because I think they think because we have effeminate voices that we also don't have some force behind these fists. And that's where I think that these individuals are about to get a rude awakening because the first thing we all do is legal action and we try and do it the, the legal way. But if something ever happens in a situation where you can't call a cop and they're trying to jump you or whatever it may be, just know none of us are, I mean, not all of us are strong, but we're stronger in numbers and just know we may not get you now, but as it goes on, um, we all will come into a family as, as we always have in so many years of constantly being beat down. And this is not just, you know, the queer community. This is every community ever. We all have all been through things and have started overcoming a lot. And it's time for open-minded uh, situations. Sorry, my phone's trying to cut off. Let me wrap this up. Okay. 
So I just want you to know that the entertainers were absolutely amazing. Uh, Brittany Diamond Black was so fantastic. Um, this is her. She is so great. I knew her many, many years ago when I lived there for about six months. Girl, it was a hot second. But she made such an impact in my life. She was always so sweet. And I was so pumped to get to see her again. Um, some new faces is Anastasia. Uh, Anastasia or Anastasia. Um, I think it's Anastasia there. I'm over here. I'm country as hell. So Anastasia is here. She's fantastic. I looked her up and I was like, girl, you you and I look like we could be sisters. Um, I'm just trying to be as tan as she is, girl. And I'm like jealous because she's lonely laid out like one time. And <laughs> super sweet. Dance the house down, girl. Um, Kirsten is awesome. I know, girl, you said that people can't say your name and they call you Kirsten, but I'm gonna call you your name, which is what you like is Kirsten. Kirsten Orlando is fantastic. This is her. Uh, super, super sweet. She's got a side eye that will kill anybody, girl. And the funny thing is about it is she's so dry uh, with her humor. And it's so funny to me because it's very opposite of me because I'm so animated. And she'll be, I'll say something. She's like, mm. <laughs> I loved it. Got to hang out with her after the show, too, um, which was great. Um, we all went to uh, karaoke, which was so cool. If you don't get an opportunity, like, you need to get an opportunity to go to Huntsville, Alabama and look at Majesty Divine for her karaoke. It was so good. Um, and then, of course, uh, we had Reese Eve Cox. She's so good. She's so different out of the box. And I tell her, you know what? You always think so out of the coffin. Um, but she's so talented. And I get so excited to see what she's going to bring to the table because I never know what she's going to do. And then, of course, her partner and her have been together for many years, um, which is Sharon Cox. And uh, Sharon is so great. She was uh, gracious enough to film a lot of my my footage and helped me out with my outfits and kept me laughing and kept me going. Even when I, I thought I was getting sick and was getting like too hot, uh, she, she kept me going and kept me laughing. But um, again, I just want to say a special thank you to every single entertainer that was there. Um, and thank you to every single person that came to watch the show. Thanks to all of you, Taylor Tots, for being so accepting of these entertainers joining uh, my YouTube channel. If you get an opportunity, go into my last video. Where's the actual performance? It's only 13 minutes long of a video. Um, and look in the description box. Go and give them a follow and say, hey, I'm a Taylor Tot from Justice Taylor. Wanted to come and support you. Um, it's uh, their Facebook pages. And then some of them are their TikToks. And um, some are Instagram. So just click on it. It'll take you there. But just, you know, I... We are stronger together. We are family. And I say this about our Taylor Tot group. And I may lose some followers and subscribers um, and supporters for this video. But I will tell you, um, if you if you don't use your platform that you have, then you've already missed the mark. And this was posted uh, because Nicole Dubois in the Gulf Coast actually said this. And somebody else reposted it. And I read it today and I loved it. And she says, if you have a platform and you have an opportunity to use it and you don't, then you will not be an opportunity to be in the limelight again. In so many words, pretty much if you are constantly um, just there for the booking and you're not actually trying to do anything with your platform, then what's the point of you actually performing? Um, again, I appreciate all of your support. Make sure that you give me um, some thumbs up. Uh, make sure you're commenting. Um, let me know uh, what you thought of the previous videos, what are your thoughts about today. Um, but I just want you to go and support these entertainers. We are stronger together. And again, we cannot be us without all of us. And, and I am so happy to have shared a part of my life with all of you. And I'm so excited to have met some new friends and new family. And I am so excited to see where, where things are going to take everyone. And again, I really want to interview them soon uh, to get to know them as a person and what they do outside of drag and where they want to go. Because again, we see the glamour in the front, but we don't know who people are behind the, the mask, as they say. And um, not everybody wants to be a social media star. And um, I just want to have a, a chance for them to get their voice out, whatever that platform may be. But, you know, go and support these people. Tell them how powerful they are as an entertainer. You think it's just lipsticks and lash, uh, lipstick and lashes, but it really is us trying to build a platform to, to do good in the world. And, you know, yes, we love making money at the same time. So if you want to give a girl super thanks, I appreciate it. It's the heart with the dollar sign on it. <laughs> but... The whole point of doing drag is for us to really build a platform and make a change in somebody's life, make a difference. Because, you you know, even if it is one person that we're helping, it's more than what a lot of us had growing up. And it takes strong, strong voices and people uh, to make differences in this world. And I, there's a lot of strong people out there that are trying to keep most of us down when it comes to being a minority in this world.
And again, minority is anybody that has never fit in or has not been accepted for who they are. And it's time for change. It's been, it's been past time due for change. But I want us to realize that if you're in a big city and you don't see it as much, how can we make an impact on these these cities that are still very um, closed-minded? And I'm not going to say the South because it's not always the South that is this way. So, you know, just keep in mind when you have an opportunity to go to Pride, you have an opportunity to go and support, you have an opportunity to go visit somewhere, please go out and support the local um local businesses, and I always say local because that leaves it open to LGBTQIA, it leaves it to Latin, it leaves it to African American, it leaves it to um, any nationality you can possibly think of, any age, any gender, anything possible as far as local, because those are the people that are going to make a difference. These corporations and global corporations, and I, I'm going to say Target, for instance. Girl, when do you see Pride merch? During Pride. Other than that, I don't really see much Pride merch, girl. And I'm not going after Target because I know there's a lot of people that work there and I don't shop there enough to to know every single in and out. But I'm just saying that that's a big corporation that the only time I really see something is during Pride Month where they slap a sticker on it. So, um, or they, they have some cute shirts and they're, they're, you know, do certain things. But again, um, just keep in mind, local are your people that you're going to see face to face every single day. I'm never going to see the owner of Target. I'm never going to see them. I'm sorry. Um, and I'm not saying, again, I'm not dissing them. They have a business to run, and it's not always going to be that. And they support in different ways. They really do. I've heard that they support in different ways. And, you know, they also have this program that if you're, like, a nonprofit, that you can shop with them, and then they'll pay you money back to you for shopping at Target. So, again, I'm not, I'm not doing that, but I'm just saying keep in mind your locals are the people you're going to see every single day. Those are the people that's in your community now, and those are the people that's going to change your community long term. So again, I love you guys so much. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. Make sure that if you love this, give it a thumbs up, give some comments. And if you really, really love it, girl, you really, really love it because girl, I'm sweating the house. Now look at this. I am sweating so bad. Like you think I'm kidding. Like I'm sweating. It is 85 degrees in this house, girl. Oh. But we'll get through it, girl. Wednesday is the day they come and fix it. <laughs> All right. So if you love me enough, girl, little girl, what's love got to do? What's love got to do? Got to do with it? Nothing. If you want to tip a girl, tip a girl. It's the heart with the dollar sign on it. I appreciate you guys so much. Have an amazing afternoon, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell so it gives you all notifications. And I will see you guys tomorrow. All right. Mwah.